Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is an A-level chemistry video and it's going to look at the free radical substitution um, with alkanes, also known as the halogenation of alkanes. So here's an overview of all of our organic reactions. So where does this sit within our scheme? So this is what I'd class as the very, very beginning. This is turning an alkane into a haloalkane using a halogen and UV light. This reaction is known as halogenation and the mechanism is a free radical substitution mechanism. First up though, if you don't subscribe, please do. Your support is very much appreciated and please take advantage of the likes and comments features to give me any feedback. Let's start with some key terms then. So the term halogenation means the adding of a halogen to an alkane. So this is the halogenation of alkanes and it's adding a group seven atom to the alkane. The term free radical is given to something or a species that has an unpaired electron. And we usually see that or represent it as a dot. So Cl dot, that would represent a chlorine free radical. Homolytic fission, this is when the covalent bond breaks to form two free radicals. For example, the covalent bond between two chlorines, if that bond breaks so that one electron goes to one chlorine and the other electron goes to the other chlorine, you end up with two chlorine free radicals. That's homolytic fission. We're going to use the term reaction mechanism and the mechanism of a reaction just shows the step by step sequence that lead to the overall chemical change. So in other words, chemical reactions don't just happen instantly as one step. It's usually a, a, over a series of sequences or steps, and that's known as the reaction mechanism. So let's look at the overall reaction to start with then. So this is known as the free radical substitution. That's because free radicals are involved and it's a substitution reaction. What we're going to be doing is one of the hydrogens, and it can be any of the hydrogens in the alkane, I've just circled one of them there. One of the halogens will swap with one of the hydrogens. So our product in this case, that one hydrogen that I've circled is going to be substituted, which means swapped with one of the halogens, leaving behind HBr. So what's happened in this chemical reaction is a molecule of an alkane has reacted with a halogen, in this case Br2. Halogen is anything from group seven. This could have been Cl2, it could have been I2. So it's a halogen. And one of the halogens in the Br2 has swapped places with the H. So now we have HBr as a product and our halo alkane as a product. In order to do that, we did need UV light. So this would be our overall equation here. It's one molecule of our alkane reacting with one diatomic molecule of the halogen, forming the halo alkane and HX or the HBr in this case. So now we're going to look at the actual reaction mechanism instead of the overall equation. And as we've seen from earlier slides, the reaction mechanism is going to show us the step by step sequences that happen in that chemical reaction. And the free radical substitution in alkanes always takes place over three steps or there's three sequences to it. So the first sequence or the first step is known as the initiation step. And this step requires UV light. And there's only one step in this section. So the halogen, I'm gonna stick with bromine. So the initiation takes the halogen and turns it into two halogen free radicals. So we end up with Br2 makes two Br dot and it's important to show this dot because I'm showing that it's a free radical. And UV light is needed, so we often write UV light above this arrow. 
UV light is needed to break that bond in the bromine. So what's actually happening here is that UV light is providing the energy for this bond to undergo homolytic fission. So that's what's actually happening. But we need to be aware of that equation. Br2 goes to 2 Br dot. Now, if this was halogenation using chlorine, then all we'd simply do is have Cl2 going to 2 Cl dot. So the second stage of the free radical substitution is known as the propagation stage. And this requires two steps. So what we need is we take our free radical from the previous step. So the free radical from the initiation is needed now. And this time it reacts with our alkane. Now I'm going to show a structural formula of ethane. So the free radical is going to react with the alkane. And what it does is it removes one of the hydrogens to become HBr. So that Br free radical removes one of the hydrogens. I'm going to remove the hydrogen on the first carbon. So that now becomes CH2. CH3. But what I must remember to do here is where I've just removed the hydrogen, that carbon becomes a free radical. So it's important here to recognize that in a propagation step, we have a free radical at the start with a non free radical, and it forms a free radical and a non free radical. And that's the first step of propagation. The second step of propagation requires this new free radical that we've just formed. So I'm just repeating this new free radical from here. This time it will react with the halogen and not the free radical. So it goes back to Br2. So it's reacting with Br2 here. And now what we do is we form our product. So the bromine now will be bonded to that carbon that was a free radical. So the bromine is now bonded to that carbon. And you can see the substitution is now complete. We've now substituted the hydrogen on that carbon for the halogen. But it also leaves us with another free radical. So again, we can recognize it as a propagation because we've got one free radical in the reactants with a non-free radical producing a free radical in the products and a non-free radical. So there's always one free radical on either side in a propagation step. That's our two propagation steps there. And the final stage of the mechanism is a termination step. This is where the reaction can be terminated, which means finished. And it's whenever two free radicals come together to form a non-free radical. So there are actually several different possibilities here. The one that I like best would be to take the free radical that we've seen in the previous slide with the halogen free radical. They will come together to form our product. So all that's happening is the free radical is joining. So this electron and this electron are pairing up to make a covalent bond between that C and Br. So that would be classed as a termination step. Another possibility would be to take a Br free radical with a Br free radical and they can come together to form Br2. That's also classed as a termination step. And again, there's nothing stopping me from taking this free radical and reacting it with another identical free radical. And this is going to be slightly more complicated to draw, but it's going to be CH3 and a CH2 bonded to the CH2 and a CH3. That's slightly more complicated to get your head around. But what's happening is this electron and this electron are forming a covalent bond. So we're literally joining those two CH2s together in the middle here. So now's an opportunity for you to have a go at some exam questions. What I'm suggesting you do is you pause the video and you have a go at these questions. And when you really hear the answer, you unpause the video. So this is asking for a propagation step. Now, without even looking at any detail, I'm completely ignoring step C because I can see that's a termination step because it's the coming together of two free radicals to make a non-free radical. 
The other three, however, do have a free radical in the reactants and do have a free radical in the products, which is a propagation step. Now, for the chlorination of methane, well, A is definitely wrong. I don't ever remember talking about hydrogen free radicals. So I'm now ruling out A. B, no, that doesn't happen. Again, I don't recognize this hydrogen free radical. So I'm in a little bit of trouble here. Hopefully D is correct. And yes, D is in fact the second propagation step in that reaction. Next up, again, pause the video, and when you're ready to hear the answer, unpause the video. An excess of methane, so we've got mostly methane here, with chlorine in the presence of UV light. So, which would be our major product? Well, again, I'm going to ignore A because hydrogen is not made. I'm ignoring C because hydrogen is not made. So I've managed to narrow this down to B and D. Usually in a multiple choice that is correct. You can usually eliminate two fairly quickly. So... Would I get multiple substitutions or just one substitution? Now, if I've got lots and lots and lots of methane and not so much chlorine, then I'm going to end up with mostly mono substitutions. If I had lots and lots and lots of chlorine and not much methane, in other words, the chlorine was in excess, I would expect multiple substitutions such as this one. So my answer here is D. Much longer question here then, so pause the video, have a go, and when you're ready to go through the answers, we can unpause. Overall equation to show the formation of trichloromethane, I'm going to find that easier to do the products first. So that's going to be trichloromethane from chloromethane. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually putting on two chlorine atoms so i need two chlorine molecules and i'll release two hcls so for every substitution you need one cl2 and i'm doing two substitutions name the mechanism it's free radical substitution there we go Part three, dichloromethane is an intermediate in this formation. Write an equation for the following steps in the mechanism um, for the reaction of dichloromethane with chlorine. Right, well, the initiation is going to be chlorine molecule making two chlorine free radicals. First propagation step will be one of these free radicals reacting with my dichloromethane, which is CCl2H2. And that chlorine will take off the hydrogen, so it becomes HCl, leaving behind a CCl2H with a radical on that carbon. So what's happened is that chlorine-free radicals come in and taken off one of those hydrogens. The second propagation is this new free radical that I've just formed. will react with more chlorine to release another chlorine-free radical, and this time making my product of CCl3H. A termination step leading to C2H2Cl4. Well, what I'm recognising here is the carbon chain has got longer, so it must have been two carbon radicals coming together. So CHCl2. So it would be two of these coming together. So that's quite a difficult one, and quite often they specify in termination steps the specific one that they're looking for. But what I've noticed here was that the carbon chain has got longer, so it must have been two carbon radicals coming together. And that's the end of this video then. Hopefully that was useful. If it was, make sure you like and comment. If it wasn't, just don't tell anyone. Thank you. Bye.